Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, from everywhere you're listening in the world. Uh, my name is Chris Rogers. I'm a senior technology evangelist here at Zerto. Um, so thank you for taking your time out of your, your days to, to come to the webinar today. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're talking you know, about Zerto for VMware today, um, and hopefully some subjects around ransomware resilience and disaster recovery. Um, so let's go, let's get in, let's dig around in, in, in what we do. So first of all, you know, what, what does Zerto do? So our mission, or our mission statement, or what, what we actually do for customers all around the world currently is protect, recover, and move data and applications for continuous availability across on-premises, hybrid, and multi-cloud environments. So hopefully that rings true, and hopefully you're on the right, right webinar. That's something that rings true to what, uh, what you want to hear about today and, and what you know and what you what you love about Zerto already if you're already a customer. Um, I just want to kind of show show you kind of how Zerto leads and, and where we've come from. So a little bit of history around Zerto and where, where we've been and where we are today. So all the way back in uh, in 2011 was when the first product came out. But actually, the 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 uh, the company was um, first made in 2009, and actually it's Zerto's 14th birthday tomorrow. 14 14 years ago uh, tomorrow is a uh, is when the the company was first founded. Um, so yeah, 2011, our first product came out. So that was hypervisor-based replication with the fastest RPOs and the fastest RTOs. And if you look across the spectrum here, across the bottom, we've always added, you know, every release we've done, we've always added major things. Um, and if you look at, you know, the hybrid cloud we've added with AWS, with Azure, IBM Cloud, we then convert DR backup and mobility to us into a single platform. And now we've added Google Cloud VMware Engine, Azure VMware Solution. And now we're moving into this ransomware recovering the multi-cloud world. And then in, in the latest release, we added the ransomware resilience with real-time detection of the Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault, which we will touch on later in the webinar as well. So you can kind of see where we've came from um, back in 2011. Our roots are very much in the VMware ecosystem. So that hypervisor-based replication was the first product came out with VMware. It was with the VMware hypervisor-based replication. And our roots have proceeded pretty strong. The vast majority of our customers came either from a VMware base and are still using a VMware infrastructure now, or have come from VMware and are now using public cloud or, or a hybrid or a combination of all those things as well. And you can see there, 1,500 partners worldwide and over 350 plus managed service providers as well. And you look at our alliances, some of the biggest names in the, in the tech industry out there, you know, AWS, obviously VMware, what we're talking about today, but Google Cloud, Azure, IBM, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. So if we look at Zerto and the VMware integration, where, where, where does the integration start and how, how, how kind of deep do we run? So in Zerto, we have two components. So we have a Zerto virtual manager, which is the control plane, and the virtual replication appliance, which is the, the data mover essentially. But if we look at the Zerto virtual manager um, first, this is a one-to-one -one mapping with a vCenter server. So if you have one vCenter, you have one Zerto virtual manager. If you were to have multiple vCenter servers, you'd have multiple Zerto virtual managers. And that really is integrated directly at the vCenter layer. So we kind of have a pairing relationship, you know, you bond it to your vCenter. And this then understands all the constructs and concepts inside of your vCenter environment and understands the environment as vCenter sees it. So things like data stores and hosts and all the other, all the other technical capabilities and technical language, Zerto Virtual Manager understands that. We deploy that as a virtual Linux appliance, which is incredibly simple to set up with your base security already there, simple to pair, simple to, to set up and maintain as well. But that bond goes really, really deep between that vCenter, you know, they, they kind of Go go one and together without without a Zerto virtual manager and vCenter together, you don't won't have the the Zerto solution to work properly. And then on the other side, we have the virtual replication appliance. So this is a one to one mapping with the ESXi hosts. So for every ESXi host you have in the environment, we will install a virtual replication appliance. And this has the direct integration inside of the hypervisor itself. So we actually install something inside of ESXi itself. So we have a deep integration into the into the hypervisor, and that's where our continuous data protection actually happens. That is where Zerto's magic occurs. It's inside of the hypervisor, and those virtual replication uh, appliances are automatically deployed with the full lifecycle management, and it is on a scale-out architecture as well. So the more ESXi hosts you have, the more virtual replication appliances you have, therefore the more replication capacity you have inside of your environment. 
And then equally, if you have a very large environment and you decide to reduce the number of ASXi hosts you have, then we reduce the number of virtual replication appliances you have automatically, and therefore your um, workload goes down. So the replication capacity goes down and up. And so it's kind of an el elastic scalar architecture we have. And then the, the integration goes a little bit deeper inside of that. So we have auto protect using vSphere tags as well. So this allows you to automatically protect VMs in, in a flexible way. So you don't ever, ever have to actually leave vCenter if you didn't want to, to protect Zerto, as, so protect virtual machines within Zerto. You can simply add tags to your virtual machines and that's native vSphere tags as well inside of vCenter to your virtual machines and they can then be added to either new virtual protection groups or existing protection groups. And essentially inside of there, we also support VMware virtual volumes. So that enables CDP on VMware virtual volumes or VVOLs as they're called um, kind of in the industry, if you will. Um, that enables CDP on VVOLs rather than using performance impacting snapshots. And we are the only vendor to support all VVOL environments as well, not just ones that have been previously tested or bespoke ones. We, we support all virtual volumes from all vendors as well. And that also allows you to do two from and between. So we're not saying you have to choose VVOLs for every single one of your environments to replicate. You can go absolutely between VVOL environments if you want. So between you know site A and site B that are running VMware virtual volumes, or from site A and site B that aren't. They're running you know different different um, architectures. You know one NFS or whatever it may be for your data stores, and one is virtual volumes. It doesn't matter. Um, to us, and again, I'm going to repeat that, the only vendors support all VMware virtual volumes as well. And then I wanted to touch on our managed service provider community as well. So we have, and I mentioned this earlier, 350 plus MSPs worldwide that are running Zerto for, for disaster recovery as a service and also into cloud disaster recovery. So, you know, fully hosted inside of their, their cloud environments at the, the service provider. And the vast majority of those are using a VMware technology stack. So things like multi-tenancy support with a VMware Cloud Director. And we can make full multi, Zerto full multi-tenanted inside of Zerto as well. So we can kind of pair alongside a vCloud Director environment or a VMware Cloud Director environment with Zerto being fully multi-tenanted and segregated for your environments as well. And if you look at the types of numbers that some of the MSPs run in terms of the amount of VMs, we're looking tens of thousands of virtual machines that are replicating using Zerto on, you know, per, per um, service provider as well. And then on top of that, we also have plugins available and self-service portals available. So inside of the VMware Cloud Director portal, people can open the Zerto self-service portal and then choose whatever they want to do with that, whether it's create new um, new protection groups, fail over, do tests, whatever it may be. We give that kind of back to the service provider, enables them to offer you know, that full white glove service. So hands off, let me deal with it, but also lets them offer a self-service model as well to our customers as well. So I just wanted to run through Zerto and, and continuous data protection as well. So this is the, you know, the core of the Zerto product, if you will, Zerto and, and how it works. Um, so our mission statement in this one, continuous protection for any app, any cloud, any threat. So we have three key pillars inside of Zerto, which is ransomware resilience, disaster recovery, and multi-cloud mobility. So all of those are underpinned by continuous data protection. So we do nothing else inside of Zerto. Everything we do is running using CDP. And then wrapped around that is a layer of orchestration, automation, and analytics for everyone to have visibility into their environment and achieve scale. Nothing in these days in IT is rarely done manually. We always need orchestration and automation. So I'm gonna run through some, um, some differences and, and why Zerto is CDP, why Zerto is the first to the market with CDP, and kind of what does that mean to everybody? Why are we running it? What, what's, what does it mean? So the first one is the near synchronous replication. So we're not scheduling snapshots. We don't have agents inside of any of the guest OS uh, virtual machines or anything else like that. And because we don't need to schedule, we don't have anything in any um, impact, we're always on. We're replicating all the time that your virtual machines are running, all the times that any changes that they're making, we're replicating all that on a continuous basis, meaning you're always protected. We have no production impact on your workloads while they're being replicated. They won't know they're being replicated anyway. We don't slow down IO. 
We don't have to wait for an acknowledgement from site B to come across back to site A. We don't have to wait for anything. It's on a, on a non-production impact basis. That's why we can achieve the very fast RPOs that you, you'll see later on. We are a software only stack, meaning we don't have to rack any more hardware for you. We don't have to worry about whether you're gonna have a colo kit or anything else like that. We're software only, very simple deployment and easy, even easier now that Zerto 10 has come out with the, uh, the Zerto Virtual Manager appliance as well. We're hardware and storage agnostic. You can choose whichever one you want. So, you know, as we as I mentioned earlier, you can use VVOLs, you can use VMware vSAN if you wish. You can use any storage by any provider if you'd like. It doesn't matter to us. And you can also protect your workloads simultaneously to a vSphere site, either locally or remotely, to the cloud, or both. You can have up to three different copies of the data replicating at any one time. And where we store that data is in our unique journal. So it gives you granular point in time recovery with, with the Zerto journal. So it allows you to recover within just minutes before an attack or disruption. So if we take the example in front of us here, if we were using traditional backup methods, you know, at, at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., whichever one you choose, we're backing up the data. We might be taking an incremental snapshot at 6 p.m., for instance, um, but then if a disaster hits at, at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. the next day, we're going to have 24 hours or, or four hours worth of data loss, depending on if, depending if we've managed to get that incremental snapshot across our whole environment. With Zerto, we simply rewind back 5, 10, 15 seconds, however much you want to, and recover from that moment in time. So minimizing data loss, minimizing downtime with fast RPOs and fast RTOs. And we're helping you neutralize their ransomware attacks. You know, we're refusing to, to pay the ransoms by saying, well, it's fine. We've got a copy of our data from 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 seconds ago, all the way back 30 days as well. So it's not just very, very short term. We can go anywhere from one hour all the way up to 30 days worth of history as well. So you can get your data back to the exact point that you need it. And let me talk about application-centric protection. You know, I, I recently came back from um, VMware Explorer in Barcelona. Um, had a great, great event, lovely people, and we're one of the best communities, in my opinion. Um, and when I speak to people, I often say to them, you know, how many applications do you have in your environment that run single virtual machines? And most of the time, people look at me as if I'm, as if I'm crazy and say, well, of course we don't. You know, we want, we want some scalability and we want some, some redundancy in our application. So we have multiple virtual machines, right? We want to split out those roles. So application, web server, file server, et cetera. But when we look at legacy data protection, we have a backup window that starts. And yes, there are all these virtual machines for the same app are added to the same policy, but that policy spans five or six hours. So you can have an app server that is out of date with a web server, which is out of date with the DB server, which is even more out of date than the file server. So then we have an inconsistent recovery. So then we're, we have misaligned recovery points. We have a longer recovery time objective because we've got to find someone who can help us stitch this back together. And realistically, we're probably going to have to go back to when the database was 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 last backed up and then build up from there, right? These staggered backup windows are not designed for disaster recovery. They're designed for backup, hence why we call them backup windows. And if we look at the way that Zerto builds out its protection, so every virtual machine inside of an application stack gets added to a virtual protection group. A completely logical grouping, which doesn't define what storage the VM sits on or what ESXi hosts or anything else like that is a completely logical grouping. But we add all the virtual machines for an application inside of this virtual protection group. And every time we're taking a checkpoint, as I mentioned earlier, every five to 10 seconds, we're taking a checkpoint across all of those virtual machines at exactly the same point in time. So the app server, the web server, the DB server, and the file server in this instance are all in time with each other. So you have a consistent restore points, even across, as I said, if they're across different storage policies or across different storage tiers, or even across different hosts as well, it doesn't matter to us. So we have an application centric approach to data protection. Let me look at orchestration and automation. Um, most people think that's, you know, in depth scripting or, you know, plugging away in the command lines, to try and get everything to work at, all at once. We have an API available if that's your game and you want to you want to automate on top of what we've already automated. Absolutely, you can do that. But what I talk about automation orchestration is making the complex tasks simple and easy to understand and everything is happening for you. So you know, pre-building those runbooks so when you need something to happen, it happens automatically for you. 
you know, you can script if you want to. Obviously, you know, I've done a fair bit of scripting in my background and people do that, do that as well. We have an API for that. But we have automation and automation built into the platform as it sits today as well without the need to, to do scripting. So, for instance, if I want to do a full failover, I simply click my failover button in the left-hand side. I choose the application I want to failover. And for instance, I'm going to choose my exchange. I then choose the checkpoint that I want to recover to. So you can see in the bottom left there, I've got total number of checkpoints. So 934 points in time I can choose from the last day and go back to any one of those, spaced only seconds apart. So I choose the point in time that I want to, I want to go back to. And then I click my start failover. And this instance is a start failover test because I want to test my, my, my DR. And once I've started that, everything is being built for me. So my VMs come up on the right networks, the right storage with the right IP addresses on the right compute as well. So everything comes up exactly as I need it to without having anything, any manual interaction from there on in. And that's what I mean by automation and orchestration. On top of those things, everything happens for me. That run book is pretty built, pretty planned and executed for me. And then if we look at the automation side of it, we can auto deploy those Zerda components for you. So once we install the management plane, we can then install the rest of the components for you and, and manage their lifecycle for you as well. As I mentioned earlier, we can then auto protect applications via tags. So go in into your applications and when you build a VM, tag it with whichever tag you need, automatically gets added to Zerto for you. We automatically scale out and load up businesses as your business grows. We automatically scale out replication, as I mentioned earlier, with our architecture as your business grows, our replication capacity grows with you and scales back with you as well. That all eliminates those horrible manual processes, enables you to protect and recover quickly. And then we look at non-disruptive testing. So in that use case a minute ago, I did a, a failover test and you can see that that was less than four or five clicks to do a full failover test. So we got a customer here on, on, on the screen, insurance customer of ours. So before Zerto, it took three and a half days to do their failover testing. Um, normally out of hours, over weekends, sometimes over public holidays. If you're listening from America, you know, a lot of time might be over Thanksgiving or, or any of the, the holidays that are coming up. Um, and after Zerto, it now takes them less than two hours to do that. And because it's non-impactful and non-disruptive to their production systems, they can do them any time during day or night. So they do them normally during production hours, no one notices it happening. They get validation that the disaster recovery is working properly. And because we have no impact production, that enables frequent and comprehensive testing. And because we have those orchestrated and automated failover tests, it becomes a lot less more impactful. We need a lot less resources to run those tests. So we can you know, free up staff to focus on other strategic priorities, you know, such as you know, containerization or moving to SaaS apps, whatever it might be on your, on your IT agenda. And I think a, a quite a cool stat here we have. So you know, Zerto customers perform 18,000 plus tests per month on average. And then they achieve an average RTO of three minutes and 19 seconds. I think that's pretty impressive, you know, from anyone's standpoint, those metrics, um, to achieve RTOs of, of less than five minutes across 18,000 tests um, every month, I think is quite staggering. So I want to run through some use cases and some architectures for you. Well. So, you know, so you can see the flexibility of Zerto and how it kind of plugs into your environment and how it might, might work in that environment as well. So one thing I want to highlight is the flexibility and choice that, that Zerto gives you. So obviously we're talking about VMware today. So we've got the VMware at the bottom there. And obviously if you want to replicate into the GreenLake environment, you can replicate into a GreenLake environment. But also we give you the flexibility to utilize public cloud as well. So Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, VMware Engine, AWS native if you want to run a native VMs in AWS, running an Oracle Cloud VMware solution, or even an IBM Cloud or one of the multiple hundreds of managed service providers we've got as well. You can choose any of these to replicate your VMware workloads to, and we will you know, replicate them, change them into the right formats. All the, all the things you think might be really hard to achieve, we can do that really easily, really simply. And one thing I do want to highlight here is, is, is giving you choice. We're not saying the only cloud environment you can choose is this vendor or the only place you can replicate to is, in, is a similar site, another VMware site. We're giving you options and choices because people are running private and hybrid, uh, sorry, <laughs> hybrid and multi-cloud environments now. And that is going to be different from organization to organization as to what they want to run, where they want to place their data. And different data sets might want to be replicating to different places as well. And 
I just want to un get, get you guys to understand the replication overview. So when we spoke about the virtual replication appliance beforehand, um, and I want to, want to build a picture of how we actually replicate data inside of the hypervisor. Um, so as I said, we have a virtual replication appliance that, that, that installs inside of the hypervisor. So once the VM is writing through the hypervisor, we go through the hypervisor down to the storage. As it flows through the hypervisor, we take a copy of the blocks that have changed and we insert it into our virtual replication appliance inside of memory in a local memory buffer. We then send that in comp uh, compressed and encrypted near synchronously. So as I said, every five to 10 seconds behind production across to our secondary site. Then we then enter it into our journal. So our, the new IO goes into the journal and we have a VDisk where we store the journals. And that journal can hold data from the last one hour all up to 30 days. So any of that, any length of time during that period, you can go back to depending on what you've configured. And once we get past the time you've set, so let's say we've set 30 days, as we get to 30 days and five seconds, the old IO goes out to the replica disk. And then when we want to recover, we simply take the replica disk, which is the oldest copy and add whatever journal and the checkpoint you want together. And that creates your virtual machine at that point in time. So now we kind of understand how it works a bit more and what the VRA actually does and how the workflow works. I want to run you through some architectures. These are going to build out and become a little bit more, not complex, but a little more um, comprehensive as we go through. So, so, you know, so stick with me. So we have production on the left-hand side here. So we, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have vCenter tied to our Azerto virtual manager. And in this instance, I've got one host, but obviously in, in Likelihood, you're going to have more than one host. But for, sim for simplicity's sake, one host. So we have one virtual replication appliance installed in this, in this site. So in this instance, I only have one site. So I'm actually replicating locally so I can achieve those super fast RPOs and RTOs, but I'm going to bring that data back up into exactly the same vCenter and exactly the same host environment. And that gives us very, me very, very quick operational recovery. So if I've dropped a database table or something's happened to a VM, I can just replicate that back locally and bring it back up super quick. And then we also have the option there to then take copies out of our journal and store them, in, uh, store them into an offsite repository, such as AWS S3 buckets or a draw blob storage, and mark those as immutable. That gives us that copy that if we need to go back further than, than 30 days, we can, but also gives us a copy that no one can touch, no one can delete, no one can remove. And that's the idea about that immutable copy, it's that kind of break glass copy, if you will. And now we're going to use this for disaster recovery. So you can see the production hasn't changed, Certo Virtual Manager, Virtual Replication Appliance. But in this instance, I do have a DR site, which is a mirror image of my production site, Certo Virtual Manager in there, and a VRA on my host. And I'm simply replicating from site production to my DR site exactly the same as I was before. So super fast RPOs, um, five seconds, RTOs are going to be very, very similar as well. And we always store the data at the destination of where you're replicating. We never store data locally unless you're replicating locally. And I'm going to build on that. And from here, I'm going to take copies from my journal. So data I've already replicated across, so I don't impact my production workloads again. I'm going to take data out of the journal. And I'm going to store it in that immutable um, copy in that offsite repository as well. Again, giving me another copy of my data outside of a vCenter environment as well in an immutable format. And now if I wanted to, I can build this out even further. Because we have that one-to-many architecture, I can have a local replica running. So on the left-hand side, we've got VRAs writing down locally. We've got a copy going across to our disaster recovery site. And then we've got multiple copies going out to that immutable copy of that, of um, into that offsite repository marked as immutable as well. So we've got that confirms to four, three, two, one. So even more than the three, two, one uh, rule that we, that we know from backup, we've got multiple copies of the data in multiple different locations on multiple different medias. <laughs> and at least one is marked as immutable and one is offsite. So we can, you know, we can conform to that plus even more as well. And now we look at the hybrid cloud architecture. And in fact, it doesn't actually change dramatically, um, which I suppose is, is a great thing, right? Because we don't want to have to change everything every time we want to learn something new. So on the left-hand side, we have the Zerto Virtual Manager, as we had before, our VRA as we had before. I'm replicating into Azure in this instance. So we install the Zerto Cloud Appliance from the marketplace. You automatically deploy the VRAs for you inside of the, uh, inside of the um, infrastructure as a service. And then we store the data in page blobs and block blob storage, because that's where we store the data for, for, for that. 
And then when we boot up those virtual machines, when we do a failover, we, obviously, we change those into managed disks. And that's all done for you. You don't need to worry about that. And that's as simple as it gets. We install it from the marketplace. We automatically deploy the virtual application appliance for you. You, do, you tell us which storage account you want us to use to store the data, and away you go. And again, I can have a local copy going locally. So if I don't want to recover into Azure, that's, that's, that's not my only copy. I can recover locally for that quick RPO, RTO back to a local vCenter. I can recover into the cloud if I wanted to. So for instance, if my vCenter went down or I had a power outage at my data center, I want to use the cloud to recover. I can recover all my virtual machines inside of Azure. And I'm also storing an immutable copy for a break, break glass instance, you know, like a cyber attack when they've gone and deleted everything I own. We can use that immutable copy, fresh infrastructure, fresh vCenter, fresh you know, um, Zerto infrastructure, and bring it back down from the cloud and re repopulate from there. And we're also seeing a lot of this architecture come through recently. So kind of repatriating workloads. So running production workloads in Azure and then replicating those back down to on-premises. We can use it as a moving or a migration option as well. But we're seeing a lot of this kind of, I've moved a load of data, a load of workloads into public cloud. I don't want to use another public cloud to, to replicate back down to. I'm going to replicate back down into my own data centers. So exactly the same setup, but just in reverse. And exactly the same setup inside of Amazon, um, or so uh, sorry, in AWS, I, I might say. So that's a cloud appliance from the marketplace. We don't use uh, Azure blobs and, and, and everything else. We also use S3 buckets because in that world, it is it's all S3 buckets. But it's exactly the same, you can see. It doesn't matter whether you're choosing Azure or AWS, the, the workload and the, and, sorry, the architecture stays the same for your workloads. So ZVM, VRAs, download the appliance from the marketplace inside of your public cloud, and we do everything else for you. And those VMs are going to move into Amazon EC2 rather than IaaS in and Azure. And again, we've got an immutable copy, can be stored in Amazon S3 and marked as immutable as well. We don't have time. Oh, we're okay. Not too bad. So, and, and uh, so that's kind of the DR piece, right? That, that's how we do disaster recovery. And now I want to build on that with some ransomware resilience um, and understanding how Zerto works for ransomware resilience, especially in your VMware workloads as well, as we're discussing today. So, so Zerto, as, as you mentioned earlier, continuous protection for any app, any cloud, any threat. So we have kind of three key areas when it comes to ransomware resilience with Zerto. The first one being replicate and detect. The second one is isolate and lock. And the third one, test and recover. So I'm gonna build these out so we can kind of understand what each area looks like. Um, and then we can kind of go from there. And there will be um, time for questions at the end. So if anyone does have questions, feel free to use the, uh, um, the Q&A box um, and we will get to some at the end, um, whatever time we have left. So the first portion here being replicate and detect. So we've already kind of hit on the replication piece pretty heavy, right? We know we're using continuous data protection or CDP for all replication of Zerto. We're not doing any snapshotting or any or anything else like that. So CDP is here all the time. So we're replicating every change as it happens every five to 15 seconds, depending on your environment. And then what we've added in detection. So very recently in Zerto 10, it came out this year. As we're re replicating those workloads, we're detecting suspicious activity inside of those writes. And then we're flagging them inside of Zerto for your admins or your cyber team, whatever it is, to investigate those. So in near real time, we're giving you an early warning signal that something doesn't look quite right in your environment. Something may be getting encrypted in your environment. And you'll you recognize this diagram from earlier um, as I explained how the workflow works, right? So we're sending the writes into the VRA and this exact this is the point where we're now we're encrypt we're, we're detecting that encryption. So we're in, in, in detecting or analyzing encryption in real time on those change blocks it, at the source site. So before we've even sent the data across to the secondary site, we can tell or we can kind of give you an idea that something might be wrong in your environment. It looks like some encryptions happened in your environment. You may want to look at. So before we've even sent anything across the other site, we're raising that flag to you saying this looks suspicious, this doesn't look like normal activity, I think you need to look at something and do something. So now we move into isolate and lock. So we've talked earlier about the mutability option, so using an offsite repository such as AWS or Azure um, and marking those copies as immutable, and that is one way to isolate and lock your data across. 
But if you were talking kind of the, the typical VMware infrastructure, we're talking, you know, two data centers that we own, so VMware to VMware, and you want that extra layer of, of security, extra layer of um, isolation, we're going to introduce the Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault to you. So this combines the concept of um, a clean room, so an isolated recovery environment, and a data vault into one solution for you. So it's completely isolated, always offline, and air-gapped with immutable copies of your data using a zero trust architecture. And this is your recovery when you have nowhere else to go. This isn't your daily recovery option you're going to be choosing for small, small uh, outages or small um, you know, file level recoveries, that type of thing. This is where you go when you have no other options. This is your, you know, the golden copy that you keep under lock and key that is, you know, away from everything that you own. And so fully isolated, fully air gapped, always immutable, zero trust. So let's dig down into what that actually looks like a little bit more for you guys. So as I mentioned before, Zerto is quite, quite simple. Zerto Virtual Manager, virtual replication appliances in our production systems. We then have a landing zone. So inside of the vault, we have a landing zone. So again, a vCenter system, Zerto Virtual Manager, and a host. And inside of here, we also then provide you with HP ProLine for your compute and an HP Electra for your storage. And we enable replication like we do with normal Zerto, replicating the data from site A or production in this instance to the landing zone. And then from the landing zone, where we've got all the copies of that data, obviously we're doing a, a continuous data protection across that, and we're still detecting and alerting for you in real time. Then inside the vault, which is going to be co-located next to the landing zone, we then have Electra to Electra replication. And that is the only way into the vault. That's the only way data goes into the vault is via that encrypted periodic replication inside the vault. And this, this can be configured so and typically four hours, every four hours we'll replicate that data across. And that's where we get our full air gap. There is no other way into the vault apart from being physically stood in front of it and plugging yourself into it. There's no management connection in, there is no you know, way of getting into that via the network you have that full air gap, which means no one can get into it. That's how we segregate it away from all the production environments. And inside of the data we're replicating is immutable snapshots of all the replica data, the journal disks, as we mentioned earlier, and all the Zerto components needed for recovery. So we're not just replicating the, replicating the data of the data stores that happen to be on the Electra. We're replicating everything you need to recover, including Zerto. So we're bringing up Zerto in your vault and recovering it that way. And our next slide will explain that a little bit more. And inside of this, the, the vault, we have a resilient automation server, so a resilience automation server. And this is the thing that manages, you know, um, the poor access, air gaps and immutability. So it marks everything as immutable on the Electra array. It closes down ports on the, on the storage when we don't need to replicate, et cetera, et cetera. So really making sure it's as secure as it possibly can be and only opening that port for replication when we need to, when we want to. So now we've got the, the, the vault set up, we understand what's happening and how the data is flowing from left to right. So if we lose production, which you know, if in a cyber attack, we probably are going to lose that. We can use our landing zone to recover. So if it's only impacted our vCenter, for instance, sorry, our production vCenter, we can still use our landing zone to recover data. So we can select our apps and our VMs to recover using Zerto. We select a clean checkpoint from the, uh, from the, the Zerto journal. So as I showed you in that image earlier, we're marking things as suspicious, but also mark and tag ones we think are clean in the checkpoint as well. So you can see that inside of the journal. We then dis non disruptively test those inside of the isolated environment on the landing zone and then validate the restore point is clean. So bring it up, is everything encrypted? No, okay, it's clean, looks like it's there. And then we can recover those workloads within minutes inside the landing zone. So in this instance now, the vault's not been used, but what happens when our landing zone has also been impacted, right? We've got a massive cyber attack, it's, it's hit production, our landing zone, everything we have. What happens then? Well, this is where the vault comes into its own. So inside of the vault, we again have HP ProLiant for compute, Electra for the storage, and we also have Aruba for networking as well. And the recovery is a little bit different. We're mounting the VMF, VMFS snapshots from the immutable snaps we have. 
we're, we're powering on. We're not powering on your VMs at this point, right? We're powering on vCenter, ESXi, Zerto VMs, exactly as it looked like in your landing zone. We're bringing all of that up. So that replication that happened, you know, every four hours on the electrics, you're saying, oh, my RPO will be four hours then. Well, not necessarily, because inside of there, we're bringing up Zerto. So inside of that four hours, we can then use the journal to go back five, 10, 15, 20, one minute increments, as I mentioned earlier inside the journal. So we're not just using snaps and mounting snaps and bringing, the, bringing everything up. We bring up your environment, including Zerto, which is your data protection software, and recovering using that. Because inside of there is your workflows, your run books, your IP addresses, everything else that you want to recover is inside of Zerto. So let Zerto recover that rather than using snaps or whatever else we're gonna have. And then from Zerto, we're using the clean checkpoints to recover. So if we look at the Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault versus other vaults on the marketplace. So this is based on a real life example. We went out and you know did our research, real life customer based on potentially 300 VMs and a roughly 300 terabytes worth of data. So in the leading backup based cyber vault out in the marketplace today, the last good copy, so the RPO is between 32 and 56 hours old. That's just, that's just how long it takes to get a clean copy through into their, into their cyber vaults. And when we're looking at the time to restore, when everything is said and done and everything's back up and running, they're looking between you know, just over two weeks to recover. So 16 to 18 days to recover that data back to a operational recovery. And then so if you look at that as a total ransomware impact, they're looking at 20 plus days of, re of recovery before they can get back up and running. And when we've tested the same customer with similar workloads, we're looking at our last good copy, anywhere up to four hours. The time to restore is at around two hours. So the total ransomware impact being six hours. And we are the only journal-based solution for cyber recovery on the market. There is no other one. Everything else is using backup-based technologies, which comes with the downfalls on the left-hand side. Things take longer. It takes longer to do everything with backup. And now we look at test and recover. So why is testing important? Well, everybody knows testing is important, right? Everyone knows why it's important. Some people don't think it's that important, but it is. Without, without testing your workflows, without testing things that are coming up, you have no idea if it's going to work or not. You're, you're completely blind. You may think they, that you've got everything perfect, but it may not. And again, the same slide from earlier that I showed you, because DR testing and ransomware testing are relatively similar, we're doing the same thing, but doing it from the vault or doing it from an isolated recovery environment. So 3.5 days down to two hours and customer tests from 18,000 tests, three minutes, 19 seconds RPO. Then I wanna run you through the tale of two attacks. So this is a, a customer, so they are now a Zerto customer, but before they, they didn't have Zerto, they were using backup. They had a, a cyber attack, and they lost 12 hours worth of data, which actually I don't think is too bad for a backup. Um, you know, only 12 hours worth of data loss, which isn't horrendous. But it took them over two weeks to recover that data. That's a lot of downtime. That's a long time to be down without that data available to, to, to use. And then they moved over to Zerto. Um, unfortunately, they did get hit with, with a second cyber attack um, after they'd installed and, and, and were replicating using Zerto. But now they've moved away from backup and using CDP for that recovery. So they only experienced 10 seconds worth of data loss and their recovery time was only 10 minutes. You know, the difference between two weeks and 10 minutes is absolutely huge. You know, I could probably drink one coffee in 10 minutes. I'd hate to think how many coffees I could drink in two weeks. Um, so that the, the, the time is, is drastic. Um, and I won't read out the, um, the quote at the bottom, but I'll give you guys you know, 30 seconds or so to read it. Because um, I think it really does kind of in, show the impact that Zerto has to, to real life customers and enabling them with a way out. So I'll give you, you know, another 20 or 30 seconds just to just to read that and take it in. Um, and then I've got a video to show um, and a kind of a small demo on how the Zerto um, encryption detection works. I have no idea if that was 20 or 30 seconds, but I'm going to carry on because I'm running tight on time. So um, so I'm going to skip through the video because it is a little bit long, um, but I'm going to kind of kind of, kind of, kind of uh, skip through this. So as you can see, here's my Zerto environment. So it's a small environment, admittedly. We've got eight VPGs, seven VMs, and 85 gig being prote protected. I'm achieving 99% compression before I'm sending, which is amazing. And my average RPO is only five seconds. So if I start the video here, so we're going to come across to our VPGs, 
And you can see my average RPO of five seconds, but some VMs are, are smaller, so some are four and, uh, and five seconds, some are 10 seconds, but you can see it as a live RPO as well. That's, we're not scheduling anything, it's all just going as it was. As you can see also, we are replicating to multiple different places. So we're going local replication to Azure and also to our DR site. So if you look at our file server, for instance, we have got that file server going to three different locations, all at exactly the same time. So that is our one-to-many replication in action there. So I'm gonna skip through here. So I'm gonna come in. So this is gonna show us our extended journal options. So you can see here, we've enabled extended journal copy, which is essentially taking that data outside, putting it into, you can see there, so we're going out, out to Azure in this instance. And on a schedule, we're taking a daily, weekly, and monthly copy. And we've also marked immutability as on as well, which means no one can touch that, no one can get near it. It's immutable, away it goes. And now we flicked over to our file server. So now I've run through this a little bit more, a little bit quicker because I am running out of time. But we're over on our file server now. So if someone were to come in and look at our file server, this is a very small file server. So we've only got a few, a few PDFs. I'm going to open one up just to show you how it looks. You know, we can see it's readable. It's in a format that we love. PDF, great, we're opened. Um, and if someone were to click this application here, thinking it's a genuine application on our file server. Um, but unfortunately it's not, it's actually ransomware that's going into our system. And you can see now, oh my God, all my files are encrypted. Everything is no longer readable. I can't get into them, can't do anything with it. That's now a problem for us, right? We don't know what we can do. We're gonna figure out, oh, my ransomware note has come up, pay me some Bitcoins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we come back into Zerto and you can see here on our file server, we have those alerts that says we have detected an abnormal encryption behavior on your virtual machine. So in near real time, we're giving you that flag to say, oh my God, something looks wrong in your environment. Only a few minutes after we actually clicked the ransomware and those files were encrypted, we've got an alert to say something doesn't look right based on previous behavior. So inside of our VPGs, again, we can come in and dismiss this event as well. So it's not as if we're telling you um, and taking action and saying, oh, we're going to fail over this automatically and that. We're saying it's a potential encryption event. You know, someone might have turned on OS encryption, which is a completely valid, you know, um, form of encryption on, on, on a server, but it previously wasn't encrypted. So we're seeing it as unencrypted. And now you've enabled it and it's encrypted your 95% of your file system. We're going to flag that and say, that looks some, like something strange that's great. Well, I'd rather someone tell me that something looks strange in my environment and it was a little bit lit, but then I can investigate. If it's a legitimate, great, I can come in here and dismiss the alert as the way it goes. But if that happened to be ransomware, I'm going to catch it far quicker here than I am inside of my backup systems that we're only going to run in uh, tonight. So now when we look at recovery, I come into my recovery. So I click my restore button. I click my files. So in this instance, I'm going to do a file level recovery because it's only a few files in my file server that's been, that's been impacted. If I wanted to, I could click a failover and recover all of my VMs somewhere to a previous point in time. I could recover up to the cloud if I wanted to using one to many, but in this instance, I'm going to use file level recovery. So now we choose the file server that's been impacted. So we're going to choose our local copy of our file server we have. We now choose the point in time that we, that we want to recover to. So I'm just going to pause the video here for a sec. So you can see total points in time in the bottom of this window, 1,466 points in time we can recover to. So we can choose any of the points before we think that something happened. And because those alerts are timestamped, it's going to tell us when we think this happened here. So let's go to the clean copy in, in our environment as well. Enabling us to kind of recover any point in time is amazing. So we can see inside of the checkpoints here that suspicion encrypt here has been tagged in here. So we can see that we want to go somewhere before that time is likely to when we want to want to recover to. And here we have here, so suspicious activity, encryption activity. And we've also tagged a clean checkpoint for you as well to say, we're pretty confident this one's clean. So if you want to have some confidence in your recovery, choose this checkpoint for your clean recovery as well. So now I mount the virtual machine 
and you can see we're browsing the directory in a familiar way that we would do normally. So we go open our C drive, we then browse as if we were browsing normal a normal Windows Explorer, so users, admin, wherever your file shares are stored, right, we, we then choose whichever files we want. So our, our, all of our six PDFs in our file share, we're going to recover there. And then we get two options. We can recover to the original location. So we choose some credentials and we recover directly back into the VM. Or we can choose to download them into the virtual machine or sorry, into the wherever we're accessing the Zerto Virtual Manager from and re-upload either to the same location or to different location. So in this instance, we're going to choose to the original location and we're going to be pushing those directly back into the VM. So we're going to close this down. We're going to reopen the RDP session to our file server. And now we come into our Z restore folder. So in the same path that we had, we can now see our file level recovery tool working its magic. And now we can start seeing these PDFs coming back unencrypted to the same location they were in originally, or just one folder layer down. So we don't actually overwrite the data, we put it back into the C restore folder for you to copy back across to the loop to there. And that is as simple as it gets, in my opinion, is recovering and as quickly as you can recover that data as well. So hopefully that was useful to you. I know it was a bit of a whistle stop tour about ransomware encryption. Um, I will cover how you can experience this for yourself in a moment as well. And I just wanted to cover kind of the elephant in the room, if you will. So I'm sure many of you who are using you know, familiar with uh, uh, VMware systems are going to be saying to me, oh, what about SRM? We use SRM at the moment or, oh, you know, Zerto, uh, VMware have their own solution. So why would I, why would I want to use Zerto? So, you know, I've, tr I've tried to be fair in this and obviously you're on a Zerto webinar and I work for Zerto. So <laughs> take that however you will. But I've tried to be fair and say, you know, um, SRM is a, is a good product. It does what it says on the tin. It does allow you to recover your sites. Um, you can choose array-based or vSphere replication to do that. Um, I think a plus or a minus because I think it does become more complicated the more options you have. Um, it doesn't use CDP like we do. Um, they have their own methodology for, for doing that. Um, but you can choose, you know, array-based or vSphere replication. They do have integrated menus within within vCenter, so it's, it's a probably deeply, more deeply integrated with the actual vCenter in terms of management than, than Zerto is. Um, and it will meet the basic compliance needs and um, of your organization for you know ticking the box for disaster recovery um and it does enable you to do non-disruptive testing you know um but then when you start digging a bit deeper there are some things where you start getting a little bit more um you know a little more limited on what you can do with, with srm you know you're limited if you're using visa replication you're limited to 24 recovery points and when we looked at the journal for zerta we had over uh, over a thousand i think it's 1400 and something we had in the last the last one we showed um you can, only have an RP, you can have an RPO of five minutes, um, only on specific things. Um, and if you look at the RPO that we had, it was, it was you know, five to 10 seconds across most of our, most of our estate as well. So um, the RTO is gonna need minutes in for both, which is, which is great. Um, they don't do an application centric approach like we do. There is no ransomware encryption detection. There are no mutability options. Um, and you are limited with your cloud options. You know, it's, it's kind of um, vSphere on, whatever else you what whatever public cloud you want to choose those are kind of your options for using that tool whereas you look at zerto and everything we've spoken about already you know cdp journal based recovery of thousands of checkpoints we have extensive multi cloud hybrid cloud support even into native clouds as well so into native azure and native aws so we don't have to use vmware on those clouds as well we have that real time ransomware encryption detection we have a different vast array of immutability options from that extended journal copy through to AWS, Azure, or we can use the, the Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault as well for that ultra lockdown approach. We're incredibly simple and easy to operate. You know, I'll say it's very, very easy to use. And we have those advanced features as well, you know, one-to-many replication, file level recovery that we just spoke about there. All of those things don't come with something like an SRM. Um, but one thing we can't do is, is, you know, we can't support vSphere encryption right now, which SRM can do. So there are some negatives, um, but I would say on the overall package, if you are looking at SRM or have SRM in your environment, you're looking to to um, to a new solution or looking to kind of improve, definitely take a look at Zerto because I believe that we can do everything that, Z, that SRM can do, plus a load more and you're gonna get loads of bang for your buck as well. So last slide from me, you'll be all, you'll be glad to know. Um, if you would like to see a live data demo, so in your own environment, email sales at zerto.com. If you would like to see ransomware encryption, um, ransomware recovery, learn how to deploy Zerto, learn how to manage and protect virtual machines, learn how to use Azure or AWS with Zerto. We have free on-demand labs available to you. Um, 
no cost, no infrastructure or anything else needed. So zodo.com forward slash lab sign up. You can do it as many times as you like. Um, if you want to use it in your own infrastructure, you want to try it, it's our free trial. And don't believe it from me. Um, go into our um, you know, our review sites, so Ghana Peer Reviews, Trust Radius, et cetera, et cetera. Have a look at the awards we've recently won from all those vendors as well. And then read actual customer reviews from Zerto because I know one of the best things about my job is whenever we go to trade shows or we go to customers or we hear from that, the best thing is all the customers come up and saying, oh my God, I love your product. It works. It does exactly what it says you're going to tell me it did. Um, so yeah, feel free to go and look at all those sites and have a look at um, you know some, some real customer reviews. And onto that, has anybody got any questions? I can see um, one in the chat already. So if you have any questions, feel free to, to pop them in now. We have got a couple of minutes I can uh, I can take to answer them. Um, so this, so so from from Clay here. So encryption can run quickly. How do you keep the journal from being overrun by an encryption event that could easily create a thousand change rate on the disk? So yes, it can do. Um, so obviously we want to go back um, a certain period of time. So we keep copies a certain period of time. Um, so we'll go back. You know, as you said amount of time if, if it fills up the whole disk then obviously we've got those options um from azure or aws to recover from um from that from that there as well we also have um the encryption detection piece as well so hopefully by the time the encryption detection has has flagged in almost near real time you would have caught that and either you, you could you can pause replication you could potentially stop the encryption from happening you could do a load of things so um there's multiple different ways of doing it and obviously depending on which one you choose will depend on on how it happens and the ultimate recovery would be from the cyber vault where you know nothing is going to get in and even if it does get in and, and fills up the disk we've got copies going back multiple multiple layers so you can easily recover from there as well so hopefully that answers your question um i'll wait a few more and see uh and see if anything else comes through um but if not i will doesn't look like anyone's got any more questions so so thank you very much for listening today um and if you have any more questions, you can contact contact myself. So chris.rogerthp.com. Find me on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever else um, you, you can find me at. Um, yeah, and hope you had a good day and hope you have a good rest of your day. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much, everybody.